All right, this is kind of the last leg of our um, solving equations. And for this video, we are only going to do three examples. Um, reason being is that this is not a whole lot different than anything that we've done. We're still solving equations. We're just throwing the distributive property part in there with it. I think that with these three examples, you'll be able to clearly see uh, what's going on here. But if you don't, please make sure you ask as you go along. I would suggest on this, if you can or if you feel comfortable with it, is to try the problem first before I even go through it. Because basically all we're doing is we're simplifying things. Like for example, in this first one, we're just getting rid of this distributive property and getting rid of this one. Then we're going to have a normal problem. Then we can solve how we normally have been solving these problems. But of course, if you don't feel comfortable, just watch the three examples as you go through here. Okay, so here's going to be the first one for your notebook. Uh, we're going to solve for n here, so we want to figure out what n equals. These are going to look pretty big and complicated, but after you simplify them down, they turn out not to be. So I'm going to start with all the distributive property parts first that we have here. Here is a distributive property part right here. We got our parentheses and we got the number in front of it. Here is a distributive property part right here on this side and we've got our equal si sign in the middle. So let's uh, distribute this out uh, so we can solve our problem. 3 times 6 is positive 18. 3 times negative 2n is going to be negative 6n. Because remember, 3 times the negative 2 is negative 6. We also have that n there. And then we have 3 times negative 4n is going to be negative 12n. That takes care of that distributive property part. I'll put my equal sign down here. I'll bring my negative 2 down here because that's not part of this over here. Uh, and then if you want to bring your plus sign down, that's fine. Now we can just take care of this. Really what I should have done is this um, because that plus goes with the 4 because we box off what's in front of it. So 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. Uh, 4 times negative 2 again is negative 8. Now, our next step in all these is always to simplify anything we can, or I should say combine anything we can. So on this side of the equal sign, we're going to be able to combine this, and we're going to be able to combine this, because they both have the n at the end of them. It's kind of like their label. So my this side is going to be 18, and then negative uh, 6n and negative 12n is negative 18n equals... And then over here, all of these things can go together because they don't have anything at the end of them. They'll all be able to go together. So negative 2, negative 8, negative 8. Um, so basically we're asking ourselves, how many negatives do I have here? That would be negative 16, negative 17, negative 18. Okay. Now we should be able to solve this problem um, without much trouble. i got to get the variable by itself on a side. So the smart choice is going to be to get rid of this 18 because then this would be by itself on the side. So I'll just subtract 18. Okay, and subtract 18 over here. Negative 18 and negative 18, how many negatives do we have all together is what we're asking, and that's negative 36. So now here is the final step of my problem. It took us all this to get down to this, but we should be able to do this. If you want to do divide by negative 18 and cancel, that's fine. That's uh, Let's see, that would be positive 2. Or if you just wanted to do, well, negative 18 times 2 is negative 36. Either way it will work, and it's 2. All right, take a little bit of time to write down the second problem. It is a little bit longer. We've got variables on, notice we've got variables on both sides here. But again, we're just going to take care of the distributed property part first, or parts, I should say, because we have one over here and one over here. So I'll box off the distributed property parts just so we keep those things separately. Remember, you always box the symbol off that's in front of it so we can tell whether it's positive or negative. 2 times x would just be 2x. 2 times a positive 4 is a positive 8. And I can bring all the rest of my stuff on this side straight down. There's my equal sign. Um, that doesn't have anything to do with the distributive property. Neither does that, but this does. 3 times 2, because we're just 
doing the distributive property, 3 times 2 is positive 6. And then 3 times 8 is going to be, what, positive 24. Now we've got our problem down to what we've seen before. Now we just need to combine if we can. On this side, we should be able to combine the 2x and the positive 4x to make a 6x. So it looks like we have 6x plus 8 equals... And then on this side, looks like we can combine, and I'll put boxes around the axes. Remember to get that symbol in front of it. Uh, and then that does have anything after it, neither does that, so those can be combined. So if I were to put these together, negative 6 and negative 10 is negative 16x. And then a 6 and a 24, just regular, is going to be positive 30. Now we need to decide which, which side do I want these x's to be on. Okay, It really doesn't matter. You can do it either way. Uh, I'll just start by, we'll, we'll keep the x's over here. Okay, So I'll get rid of the x's over here. So that's going to be plus 16x. And you could do it the other way too. I could start by doing minus 6x, minus 6x. But I'll do it this way. Okay, If I subtract those, that's going to cancel. And I would need to do my plus 16x on this side. Uh, 16 and 6 is going to be what? 22x. Okay. Now I got to get rid of this here because I want only the x's over here. So the opposite of plus 8 is going to be subtract 8. So if I subtract 8 over here, positive 30 minus 8 is going to be 22. Well, that's a pretty simple end to our problem here. Uh, 22 times what equals 22? Of course, it's 1. So x is going to equal 1 for this problem. Again, big long problem with tons of stuff in it. Once it boils down to it, it gets down to what we've already seen before, uh, and then it's really easy. All right, last one. Take a little bit of time to get this one copied down, uh, and then we'll get started on this here. There's again, there's two distributive property parts in this one. Oops, I should get the plus sign in front of it there. That would be a distributed property part right there, uh, as with this. So let's take care of those. So we have 6 plus 3, and now we've got to do our distributed property. 10y times negative 2. That's going to be negative 20y. Uh, 10y, and I should have boxed that off, but yep, that would be positive times a negative is a negative. Uh, 10y times positive 4 is just going to be positive 40y and then 10y times positive 8 is going to be positive 80y. Don't forget that y in there because when we multiply things together we include everything. Okay, Equals. Um, we're going to have this plus 9 at the end here but we've got to take care of this first. Uh, 45 times 23, I don't even know what 45 times 23 is. 45 times 23 1,035, 1,035, and now this is negative 3, 45 times negative 3, uh, we'll do that on here, Just I know it's going to be negative, negative uh, 135, then I have my plus 9 right here. Now, let's combine some things together. Uh, looks like we've got three things that have Y after them here, so we could put all of this stuff together for sure. Um, make sure that we've got negative 20, positive 40, positive 80, they all end in Y, so we can combine all those together. Um, negative 20 and 40 would be positive 20. 20 and 80 is going to be 100, so that's 100 Y. And then these two things we should be able to combine. 6 plus 3 is just going to be 9. So we have 9 plus 100y equals, uh, all of these things can be combined together right here because they don't have anything at the end of them. So I've got 1,035, I've got negative 135, and I've got positive 9. Uh, so if I work all that together, um, if I'm just going to use a calculator here, 1,035 minus 135 is, oh, 900. 900 plus 9 is obviously 909. So now we have it here. 
Uh, and now we just, we're closing in on being done with this problem here. I want the variable by itself on a side. It is as soon as I get rid of this. So that's positive nine minus nine would be its opposite. Subtract nine here, that's gonna be 900. Here's my final problem. That should be pretty easy. 100 times nine is 900, so y equals nine. If you didn't know that, we could divide by 100 to cancel, and divide by 100 here, which is still nine. Again, if you've got problems with this, and you know, a lot of these, you know, you could do in various ways. I mean, we're still going to do the distributive property. We're still going to combine together. Um, but, you know, just keep with what we've talked about before, and I think that you'll be able to get these. But if you don't, make sure that you ask.